All right. Short little stop because I was uh, I was dying. I posted up an Instagram story, and now we're gonna continue. I don't want to bail, but 100 miles of this, and I've I've done seven. I'm I'm not even 10 percent of the way through it, and man, I'm struggling. This is different. Any advice you lot have got? Slap it in the comment section because God knows I need it. See, like, why can't it be like this? Right, it's not awful. Why is every off-road trail got to be so much harder than, like, so much more experience required than the experience level I have? But I guess this is the only way you uh, you learn is to to go ahead and do stuff like this. But a mate of mine, he was saying when I was talking about doing like the uh, some off-roading in in Norfolk, he was like, yeah, the amount of times I've been down here is in T7 stuck and what have you. I was thinking T7, so that was like 100 kilos lighter than this bike. <laughs> and that's getting stuck. <laughs> It'd be a miracle if everything doesn't go pear-shaped. I mean, we're doing all right so far. Touch wood. <laughs> the Bart Busters have been insane as well. Uh, if you've got a scrambler and you do want to take it off-road I'd highly recommend a set of bark busters. My fan is working overtime right now Probably because it's had no clean air for a while Once I do hit a bit of a, a quiet road area If I get there, I'm probably gonna stop again actually get some layers off for a bit because I am sweating I didn't even take my helmet off last time because it was just... Right, what if I come out of this rut? There we go. There we go, we're learning about the route selection now. We're getting better. Every time, just a slow improvement. So all these little farm tracks that you, you just wouldn't know about unless you were a local. Some poor blokes could be like, you know, walking his dog around here or something and then just get met by me oh that was almost a low side that was a hundred percent my fault I just tried to turn out of a rut it's all right when it's a dirt bike you don't care but when it's your your only bike you do care so if anyone out there is selling a cheap dirt bike hit me up on Instagram at no scrambler because I might take it off your hands. <laughs> Houses, that's it, another section complete. 8.11 miles off-road, average speed of 11. 11.3 miles an hour. Oh, both me and the scrambler need that, I think, wow. It is hot. Oh, we're here. <laughs> this is mental. Off-roading is mental because like, you just wouldn't expect to uh, to just rock up here. It's completely new to me. Like this is the first proper trail, if you will, that I've uh, I've attempted. And man, wow, what a bloody nice breeze that is. Some beautiful houses. If I make it to Wells today, I think that'll do me. Like, <laughs> you know, if I make it all the way to Wells on sea, I'll be happy. But right now, this is, this is the kind of stuff that I'm enjoying. We're going straight onto some gravel, so we're going to change down into third at least. <sighs> accept the bumps, because that's what I've learned. Just accept the bump, point the bike, and it will eventually get there. Little dabs of brake, not loads at once, because that's how you uh, you do biff it. I see a guy when I was out for a walk um, on a Royal Enfield doing this, which I thought was mental. We're kind of following like kind of peddler's way, which is mental. Um, 
that you can even, you know, still do this kind of stuff. It's all legal to to do. The the bikes performed very well, considering this is a glorified street bike. You know, like this is not its main role to go off road. This is it's just like a. Uh, if you wanted to do a bit, you probably could. Like not not some enduro trails which this is pretty much an enduro trail <laughs> uh, for um for norfolk anyway my speed's increased though which is great which means i am getting more and more confident with handling the bike in um in these conditions i guess man this is like proper like red sand this is like beach sand <laughs> Why is it like this? <laughs> they look so confused, like why the hell am I going down here? Oh man. Yeah, I am enjoying myself now. This is this is more what I was hoping for, not that tight stuff. But those tight trails man they they might as well just like you know i might as well have got off and pushed i'm not very confident on it i'm not very confident on sand either i won't lie but you know this kind of stuff this is like this is fine at the moment my body's kind of being like a sponge and it's getting used to it and like it's learning from its mistakes and i think there's going to come a time where i i just get a bit tired and then that's when i'll make a mistake and could have a spill there's a few roads around Norfolk that are like this and I have taken the bike down them because they're uh, they're like light trails and you can get some good photos of uh, of gear and stuff for for Instagram. This will teach you bike control in like a heartbeat. Man. Teaches you to like throw it about a bit as well, especially with the weight of the, the scrambler. You can definitely tell that I'm more confident on this thing. I know it doesn't seem like it, but there is definitely a marked improvement from when I literally first turned up at the, the start of this route and was like, holy, like there's no way. And now I'm kind of just like, yeah, just piece by piece, little bit by little bit, using those same skills that you learn in your mob one, little bit of throttle, clutch control, tiny bit of rear brake. There's only one way to do that. Okay, that was overconfidence there. Tried to go over that little dip. And I mean, it worked, I got over. I did feel it slip out. Bike's gonna need a serious wash. I might just pressure wash it on the way home and I'll um, I'll detail it again in the morning. I like to keep it in like, you know, meat ready condition. That's a meat ready condition. I just like it clean, you know, like it is a tool, yeah. And you, you can, you should give it a good clean. I used to just waterless wash my 125 all the time. That was all I ever did to it, and it was always immaculate. Might have to let these cyclists come through. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> Friendly interaction with cyclists. I don't think I've had that before. <laughs> We're getting there. We are actually, you know, I do feel so much more confident about tackling these little lines. It's almost like being on like a skinny on a mountain bike because that's just how I'm kind of thinking about it. And just trying not to focus too far in front of the bike and just take what's coming at me. Not quite like Two World Adventure UK. He absolutely canes down these little lanes and stuff. And I, I just don't have the, the confidence yet. I won't lie. It is a confidence thing. This bit is, uh, is tight, yeah. It's taking a lot of concentration. That's why the commentary is not as free as some of the other motor vlogs, but you know, something different. See this bloke try and wrestle a scrambler. <laughs> I think I know where I'm about to pop out. I've been here before as well. And this is where I saw that bloke on the Royal Enfield. And I wondered what he was doing. He must've been doing this. I mean, he's braver than me. Although the Royal Enfield is a lot lighter. I've kind of realized that I'm not ready. I'm not ready to continue. I am I'm too hot today for one. I don't have enough um, 
drinks with me and it would just be an incredibly an incredibly stupid idea so that being said I've given up with the 100 miles of Norfolk challenge for today I will be back though I'll be back and I'll be stronger back stronger when I am however for now I'm going to enjoy the breeze because I took my gear off and oh my goodness, I was peppered. I was so soaked through. My entire t-shirt was wet. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna enjoy just, you know, the breeze on the way home. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Like this video if you did. Subscribe if you aren't already. And ring the bell so you get notified when I post new videos. And, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.